What up, it's Chris from Laser Lemming and the PS4 Neo is in stores now. Probably not. Sega did that once upon a time with the Sega Saturn. They announced the thing and it came out very shortly after in retail stores. But the PS4 Neo is being revealed today, September 7th. Now, I'm recording this on the night of September 6th, so I'm going to be talking out of my ass a little bit today, but that's okay because present Chris knows much more than past Chris does about the PS4 Neo. In fact, he knows that it might not even be called the PS4 Neo. It might be given a different name, like PlayStation 4.1 or something lame like that. But the whole idea behind the PS4 Neo and the Xbox One Scorpio is that they're backwards compatible. Any game that comes out for the PS4 will be playable on the Neo and the original PS4. Same thing with the Scorpio. It's got to be playable on the Scorpio, and it's got to be playable on the original Xbox One. So, kind of a phone model like the iPhone and Android phones where, hey, you bought uh, Angry Birds on your old smartphone, you get to play it on your new smartphone too. Backwards compatible. It's a different way of doing business for the gaming industry. At least, you know, traditionally for the console makers. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they've never done anything like this before. And Sony and Microsoft so far are going full steam ahead. Now, Microsoft announced the Xbox One Scorpio. I'm just going to call it the Scorpio. They announced the Scorpio at E3, and Sony was like, whoa, really? Why? We're not even going to talk about the Neo right now because it's not ready. And the Scorpio's really not ready because that thing's not coming out in probably, until probably the end of next year, November 2017, likely. Maybe a little earlier, October. Traditional console launch time. The Neo? Who the hell knows? We'll find out. Today, it's going to happen. So they're going to show off the PlayStation 4 Slim, the system where they literally cut the corners off the thing. It's got rounded edges. I'm not a big fan of the look. It's a little bit smaller. It doesn't have the light bar. They move the light bar to the controller, I believe, which, if anything, that controller needed, it was more light. So bravo, Sony. Way to take it off of the system and really shave off a couple bucks. Not even. I don't know how much that bar cost, but... It couldn't have been that much for Sony when they're producing them and making them by the millions. So, I'm not a big fan of the look of the PlayStation 4 Slim, supposedly. You know, it improves performance. It's a little uh, quieter, I believe. Not a lot cooler as far as I know. Who knows? I, I just kind of skimmed over impressions. But I'm going from a visual standpoint. I'm not a big fan of this cheap-looking system. And it looks cheap. And I think that was part of the idea. Now... Usually, when Sony makes a revision, they do pretty good. I thought the first PS3 revision was kind of slick. It was a slimmer system, and that system needed to be slimmer. And it was nice. Now, when they revised the PS3 again with this graded plastic crap, I wasn't a fan of that. It looked cheap. It felt cheap. It was made cheap. I'm getting those vibes with this uh, PS4 Slim. Now... Granted, you know, it's missing a light bar and it's got curvy edges. What do I know? But I guess I'm comparing it to the Xbox One S because that thing looks slick. And I think there's a different strategy going on here. Because if Microsoft is definitely launching the Scorpio much later than the Neo, they have more incentive to get you to buy a current Xbox One. And the Xbox One S is what they're trying to sell now. You know, the Xbox Ones went down to like $280 for a little bit. They're probably still there for that price, but that's just because they're clearing out inventory. You think they're going to stay that price? No. The Xbox One S is Microsoft's present and future for a while. Until the Scorpio comes out, they're full steam with the Xbox One S, not the Scorpio, because the Scorpio, as Microsoft is putting it, is a high-end console. It's going to cost a lot of money, and it's made for people with 4K televisions. Now, not a lot of people have 4K TVs right now, but that will change. Right now, we see them as this is like, eh, who needs it? Who's ever going to need two terabytes on a hard drive? Who's ever going to need eight gigs of RAM? You've got all you need with 400 megabytes on your hard drive or whatever. You know, it's this mentality we have that whatever we have is enough and it always will be. Uh, Microsoft is kind of jiving with that idea to me right now. And now they're saying, you know, Anything that you could play on the Scorpio, you could play on the Xbox One, and vice versa. It's a 4K system, meaning it's going to output at a 4K resolution. 
And right now, like I said, not everybody has a 4K TV, but they will. They will. As more and more TVs are created for 4K, more and more people will get them. Simple as that. Now, as long as your TV works, not a lot of people are jumping out of their seats to go buy a new TV because TVs are expensive. There are some people that do. And Microsoft and Sony are chasing these people. I can see why Sony is because Sony makes TVs and they want to sell TVs. Actually, I heard that uh, they're going to be selling 8K TVs by 2020. I believe that's the year. So get ready to upgrade again, folks. This is what they want. They want you constantly upgrading, much like a smartphone plan. Now, smartphones, people are getting them on average in this uh, first world country, America, and probably Europe as well, many European countries. Every two years, you know, you're paying it off. One year, two year, new smartphone time because your old one's gonna be updated to kill itself and the battery's gonna be useless and that's the cycle of life. Now, I'm sure Sony and Microsoft would love for you to buy a new PlayStation and a new Xbox every two years. That would thrill them. Will it happen? Uh, maybe, not at first. Right now, they're testing the waters. They're dipping their toe right in the water. See if it's a little chilly or not. See if people, gamers, console gamers, are receptive to this business model. And I think, honestly, they will be. And I also think it's going to be kind of forced. Now, Sony and Microsoft are saying, this is an option. Microsoft right now, like I said, is saying, this is for the high-end gamer. The people that want to play in 4K. They are willing to spend a lot of money. It's going to be the most powerful console ever created so far. Now, that doesn't matter. Because eventually... Just like the original Xbox One is getting phased out, so too will the Xbox One S. And the PlayStation 4, the original ugly PS4 Slim, will be phased out. That's the, them's the breaks. That's how it happens. And the reason is because the technology will get cheaper. And sure, for a while, they are going to keep selling these systems because they can sell to the low-end consumer. They can sell them. The price can go down. The PS4, the original PS4, and the original Xbox One could hit $200. And they could sell them like hotcakes. They'd like that. They'd like that. But eventually, they want to make more money. Once they saturate that low-end market, they're going to push the higher-end, more expensive consoles on people more. So there will be more inventory of that available. There will be more incentive for you to buy it. And I believe the games, despite what they say, will suffer on the original systems, especially the Xbox One. That system already came out the gate gimped compared to the PS4. So as these newer systems are taking over, they're getting more and more of the market, lots of people are upgrading their systems, and lots of people are just jumping in now on the newer, better systems. The games are going to play better, they're going to look better, and they're going to get more focus from the developers. What do I mean by that? Well, right now, Sony and Microsoft have these mandates that say, if your game is playing on both systems, and it will, it needs to run X, Y, and Z. This way and that way. On this system and that system. So, if Call of Duty, next Call of Duty after Infinity Warfare comes out, the next one in 2017, Call of Duty 2017, once that comes out, they could say, hey, this system, the PS4 Neo is going to run this game great. It's going to have more effects, better lighting, a more solid frame rate, and you're going to love it. And the PS4 version, the original PS4 version, it's going to run pretty good, but not as good. And that's going to be the standard, and that's going to be okay to Microsoft and Sony. But as the years go by, you're looking at Call of Duty 2020, okay, 2021. And the PS4 Neo is the real focus. The old PS4, who cares, right? Even though Sony mandated it in 2016 that they have to run good, they have to run well on both systems, it's going to slip through the cracks. It's going to happen. It's going to happen because now developers have to focus on more consoles, and that is going to distract. And you think Sony and Microsoft want to lose the next Call of Duty game because Activision screwed it up? No, no, they don't. They want to have the system play, they want to have the games play well, sure, but they want to have the games available for every system. So even though you're going to buy the PS4 version, one PS4 version will play on both systems, it doesn't matter because it's going to play better on the PS4 Neo. That's it. S simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. <laughs> and I'm rambling. But 
what I'm saying is that eventually, if you don't upgrade, much like your smartphone, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And to the point where I think some games are going to be unplayable. And a lot of you guys are hoping, wishing, praying that that you are going to get patches for your old games to play better on the Scorpio and the Neo. No, don't count on it. Maybe one or two token games. But don't count on a Uncharted 4 patch that's going to make Uncharted 4 run at 60 frames per second on the Neo. It's not going to happen because Sony has already sold the vast majority of Uncharted 4 copies that they will ever sell. They have no incentives to spend extra money to do that, at least not right now, until they make a remastered version a few years down the road. So let me know your thoughts. I have rambled a little bit, but I like this. It's very interesting to me, and I want to know your comments in the comment section below. What do you think about this upgraded cycle? It's happening, folks. Tomorrow is Sony's day to shine. Microsoft did it in E3 without showing a system. Sony is going to actually show us a box. Great. And they're going to show us some games. They're going to show us some comparisons. I hope. And, you know, they'll show that uh, PS4 Slim as well. So, comment section below. Subscribe for more if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.